by myself. Can't make it by myself. I need the Lord to fight my battle every day for me. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right, stand with me if you will. Let's go to the book of Genesis. Ain't it good to be a Christian? Praise the Lord. God is so good to us, and He has been so good to us. And He's good to us every day. He, when, he, when He allows us to get out of the bed every morning, God's good to us. Genesis chapter 17, if you have your Bible. And uh, that, uh, an announcement I made last Sunday was supposed to be been that we have communion tonight, not this morning. So our communion uh, service will be tonight. And uh, I apologize, and, and uh, I guess it's called part timers. I don't know what it's called, but it's called it was called a mistake anyway. Amen. So all right, God's good to it. Genesis 17, 1. And Abram was 90 years old, 90 and 9 years old. Now I'll get this right. Wait a minute. And when and when Abram was 90 years old and nine, and the Lord appeared unto Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thy perfect. Now I want you to really underline some of these statements that I'm going to read here tonight, some of these verses this morning. And be thy perfect. Verse 2 said, And I will make my covenant between me and thee, and I will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be called Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. I want to preach just a little few minutes on the subject. A perfect heart. I'm not preaching about a perfect person but a perfect heart. Close your eyes. Would you do that and just raise your hands as they sing me a chorus. I need your mercy. Thank you, Jesus. I need your grace. Lord, thank you today. I need your hand. Jesus, bless this service this morning. The way. God, we can't make this. Can't make it without you. Not for one day. a perfect heart God also said uh, to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy 18 13 thou shalt be perfect pick that boy up get him up out there you go thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God we hear that word that statement being perfect several times through these readings David, in his uh, life, was determined in his heart. If you read and, and, and uh, study David, you can find that he was determined in his heart to obey that command. Now I've heard, I, I, I know people. It's not hearsay, I know. Somebody said, I don't think I know. Uh, that people, I've heard people say that uh, I, I know it's a situation where a man got angry because the preacher was preaching that David was a good man, great king. And this person got angry at the, at the minister because he was saying good things about King David. And because he used the... the uh, uh, fact that David had committed adultery and actually committed murder may as well to pull the trigger and so this person was saying that God would never use a person like that my thoughts were buddy you better hope you're wrong because if I read the Bible right 
That is not a, any big sin or a little sin. Sin is just sin. And so God is, is saying to Israel, Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. David was so determined, he wrote in Psalm 101 and 2, I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Isn't that awesome? Now I got, it's going to take me several minutes here to build you a foundation where I want to preach. My sermon's going to be short, but my foundation could get long. <laughs> he said, I want I to behave myself wisely in a perfect way. And, uh, and said, Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk, ready, I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Now he didn't say he was going to be perfect. I'll explain that as we go. But he said, I'm going to do this with a perfect heart. We also see, if we go to the Word of God, we also find a man by the name of, of Solomon. I mean, remembers King Solomon. I believe the Scripture supports the fact that he was the wisest man besides Christ Himself that ever lived. He was the man, you understand, that, that uh, took the two ladies that were arguing and fighting over one live baby. How many of you ever read that story? One baby was killed, but was uh, laid on by the mother and was killed, and, and the babies were the same age, and, and they were arguing back and forth whose baby was who. And, and Solomon was the one that said, I got an idea, just cut the baby in half. Give the half to this one and the half to that one. That one said, No, wait a minute. No, said, just go ahead and let her have the baby. She said, That's the mom. That's the mom right there. So, according to my. My calculation, according to what I read, Solomon was very wise, was real wise and, and some kind of rich. And it was because of his uh, love for God that got him all the riches. Because if God asked him, what do you want from me, Solomon? Just ask. Man, I could have thought of a lot of things. You know, I, I, just there's no telling what I could have came up with. But Solomon said, I want wisdom and knowledge to lead your people. God said, you got it. And because you didn't ask us and us and us, I'm going to give you riches beyond treasures. And so Solomon, what we find in the scripture where Solomon come up so short of the commandments of God when it said to be perfect. He came up so short because 1 Kings 11 and 4 said, for it came to pass when Solomon was old, that his wife turned away his heart after other gods. Are you listening to me? Listen, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord. This is, this is going this is going to mess up all kinds of theology that I read. His heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David, his father. Isn't that awesome? Well, don't that tear down that theory? That theory? So we find God, the Scripture is talking about a perfect heart. Not necessarily a perfect person. Did you know the Bible said that the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord? It didn't say the steps of a perfect man. It said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Jesus also gave us a commandment, still on the foundation. Jesus also gave us the commandment to be perfect in Matthew 5, 48. If you'll read that, it said something like this, Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father in heaven, or Father which is in heaven, is perfect. So these, these scriptures that I'm putting to you, Paul writes to the church in Colossia, in 1 and 28 of Colossians, who we preach warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we might present every man perfect in Christ. So he's given this, these messages, these scriptures that I'm, I'm giving you, I'm giving to you as a warning. Just like Paul gave to the church in Colossians. He gave to them a warning. Verse 4 said, Who is one of you, a servant of Christ, 
salute you always laboring fervently for you in prayers that ye may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Well, these are these scriptures stood out to me. I said, I gotta preach about that. I, I gotta tell somebody else about this. They got a song, choir sing somewhere of uh, Alexandria, I believe it is. The Sippy says, Stop, wait a minute. Gotta tell somebody what the Lord has done for me. Stop. Wait a minute. Got to tell somebody what the Lord has done for me. I'm sounding a warning today. I'm sounding an alarm today. First Peter or, or, or First Peter five and ten says, "But the God of all grace, who had called us unto His eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect." Establish, strengthen, and settle you. And then he goes on and says, Now uh, the scripture teaches us, all these scriptures that I read to you are teaching us about a perfect heart. It's not, it's not telling us. Now, now if you, you disagree with me, if you want to, you go ahead and just be wrong. It, it's not telling us that, that I'm, I'm perfect. But it is telling us that we better have a perfect heart. Our attitude, our heart better be perfect before God as was King David's. i got to give you some more scripture. I love the Word of God. What about you? So this is telling us, it's not telling me that I'm going to be sinless. Because the Bible said, if you know to do good and don't do it, you're sinning. So it's not telling me that I'm going to be sinless or flawless. We do make, we will make mistakes. We do make mistakes. How many's ever got angry? Well, you made a mistake. How many's ever said bad stuff about your neighbor? Well, well you don't have to even raise your hand. I know everybody has. Because your neighbors are like mine. They're not perfect neither. And so I'm saying, I'm telling you that he's not telling us that I'm sinless or that I'm flawless. But he's telling me that my heart better be flawless. My heart better be to the point, and I'll tell you what a, what a heart is supposed to be like in just a few minutes. You see, God judges our motives. He judges why we do things. You teenagers don't even, didn't even know that. That God judges you by your motives of why you do he, he judges us. Uh, he, David said uh, to have, to have uh, was said to, to have a perfect heart towards God. A perfect heart. What do you think of when somebody mentions King David? What did God get angry about? I know what I'm talking about. I know this guy personally. What did he get angry about? He got angry because somebody said that David was a great man. Well, if he wasn't, who was? He was the best king and the best warrior, best leader that Israel ever had. But when you think about David, if you're not mighty careful, when somebody says something about King David, you say, oh yeah, that's the guy that killed the old gal's wife, a husband. Very seldom does somebody say, oh yeah, I know him. He was the best king Israel ever had. He's known by his mistakes. Of oh, course, you're not listening. You, you yeah. don't go eat. You know, a lot of people, they, they don't know you by the good you do. They want to know you by the bad you do. They, they, want, they want to mark you as that old skin flint. But David was, David was judged. God, David teaches us that God judges our motives. He said, he had said to have a perfect heart, but he was marked a different way. Now listen carefully. Perfection in the Hebrew and in the Greek means maturity. It means uprightness. Being without spot. Now we're talking about the heart. Being without spot, without blemish, totally obedient. Well, that knocked all of us out of the saddle. Totally obedient. obedient a means to finish what was started 
a complete performance, perfection. Doing what's right, a perfect heart. Let's talk about it a minute. A perfect heart, what kind of a heart would you think a perfect heart is? A perfect heart, I pulled every one of these out of the scriptures, a perfect heart is a heart that responds to God. A, a responsive heart. It is, it is quickly and totally ready to answer the Lord's whispering and His warning. When God sends a warning, a perfect heart says, Okay, God. Now, Mary, we all know, you know, if, if anybody, you know, I mean, like, you know, she was chosen to, to give birth to our Savior. And when the angel came to Mary and said, Hey, Mary, guess what? You've been picked out of all the whole women of the whole world. You was chosen to give birth to, to, to Jesus and said, you're going to conceive and bear a son and going to call his name Jesus. He's going to save the people from it, his people from their sin. Mary said, how shall this be? She, Mary wasn't questioning the angel. She was saying, wait a minute. I ain't never had been with a man. How can it happen? She wasn't Doubt saying, oh, how can that be? I, that, blah, blah, blah. She was saying, I, I've never been with a man. I, I'm a virgin. How can this happen? The angel said, the Holy Ghost shall overshadow you, and that holy thing which is born in you shall be called the Son of God. And what you did? She said, okay. Okay. So be it. That's how a perfect heart responds to God. The heart that says at all times, the song, I thought about you, Brother Jim, when, when I was preparing this, I thought about that song you used to sing. Speak, my Lord. Speak, and I'll be quick to answer thee. Speak, my Lord. Speak, my Lord. A perfect heart is willing to answer the Lord when the Lord speaks. He's ready, and he, the perfect heart is ready to hear and ready to obey what God says. That's the perfect heart. A perfect heart is searchable. A perfect heart says, Lord, search me. Search me, Lord. 1 Chronicles 28, 9. And thus Solomon, thy son, knowest thou the God of thy fathers and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind for the Lord searcheth all hearts. He searcheth our hearts and he understands all the imaginations of our thoughts. And if thou seek of him, Sister Chrissy, you touched this. If thou seek of him, he will be found of thee. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. Let him search. A, a, a perfect heart is willing to say, God, search my heart. I, I know you're going to find stuff there, Lord, that's not right. And I, I know that I've done bad things and I know that, I, that I'm not perfect and I know that I have a lot of, lot of growing up to do, Lord, but search me anyway. I'm not afraid, Lord, for you to search me because I recognize, Lord, that I'm a dirt man. And, and so, God, you search me. And what he's saying is you search me to the fact, Ballard, that when you find it, you can clean it up. It don't do no good to find something and not change it. That's what I hear about these big time. Well, I need to stay out of there. I don't even need to touch that. Oh, boy. I don't, I, I, really, I'm not. 139, 23, a psalm said, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me. And know my thoughts, Lord. Verse 24 said, And see if there be any wicked way in me, and lead me in the way of everlasting. And when you find that wicked way, Lord, lead me out of that situation. I'm preaching to somebody here today. Lead me, Lord. And Jeremiah the prophet said in 17.10, I am the Lord. Search the heart. Dig in my heart, Lord. These passages, passages of scriptures are giving us warnings that we don't realize 
listen carefully, we do not realize as people, as humans, as Christians, as non-Christians, whatever we tag ourselves in, we do not realize the, that the deep association that evil affects us with. We don't realize when we associate ourselves with evil how deep that affects us. We, don't, we, don't, we need to watch who we associate ourselves with, young Amen. people. Amen. You don't need to run with people at school that, that, that's all time spending more time in the principal's office than they do in their classroom. You don't need to date a boy that, oh, I need that. Well, he's, you know, he made a mistake. Yeah, right, okay. I, I can go along with that. You, you, don't, you, don't, you, you don't realize how deep this goes. You know, well, he just takes a little drink every now and then. Yeah, or he just smokes one joint a day. <laughs> I asked a boy one time, who was, was, me and him was kind of quoting scriptures, you know, and he, he was on one side of the fence and I was on the other side of the fence, you understand. And I quoted him the scripture that it was wrong to drink. And, and the scripture says something about, said that uh, no drunk can read in the kingdom of heaven. I had him, man. I had him. Boy, I had him right by the nose. You're like you're doing old bull. He said, but if you drink one drink a day, you're not a drunker. So then he got me by the nose. But then I turned around and turned it around again. I said, but if you tell one lie a day, are you a liar? I got the nose again. You don't realize how effective we become by the things of the world. Sin has turned in, the world has took sin and changed it all together. Now, now I, I guess I'm going to have to get personal. It, 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 a sin, if you take, uh, if you, uh, uh, Satan himself leads us in the path of hell. And, and evil communication corrupts good manners. And we have to watch who we associate ourselves with. And, and watch how we how we conduct ourselves. Uh, in, in this day that we're in, these final days, sin has come to us disguised. You don't recognize it. It's hard to put a finger on it. It's disguised as art or a culture or education. Sin is not sin like sin was when we were young. Sin's different, they say. Sin has taken, listen carefully, a stronger and deeper roots than ever. Let me show you something here if I can, if I can find the page that, that I want to look at. Yeah, right here. Our children, our young people that are sitting on our pews here today, those grandkids that you'll take home with you after church and bring back tonight, hopefully, our children are confronted with sin that we as older people never, ever had to or never known. You know, we, we never, I never know the things, the sin. My wife was speaking, we and I, her and I were talking the other day, and, and it was another couple, it may have been uh, Brother Stan and Sister Brandy, I can't recall for sure, but we were sitting and talking, and, and my wife said something like she said, she re could remember the day, and I can remember it very well, where young people didn't even talk about a woman being expected. It wasn't talked about. Is all that's crazy. Well, it, no, what's crazy is when they talk about it today. Amen. That's what's crazy. When sin wasn't talked about in that day, young people just didn't do it. They just it just wasn't. If you got if you got to carry it away too much, you got to slap them out. I know that's child abuse. I understand that. So be it. So be it. Send me send me the ticket. I'll pay it. But sin is, is, is totally different today. Uh, our children don't know. Uh, we never knew what they knew. We don't. Kids got more education now than, than we had when we were young. They know more about it right now. You, man, you ought to hear some conversation on the school bus. The big bus. Thank God for the, for the special needs bus. And they're great drivers. You ought to hear some of the conversation between 
middle school. Where's my teachers? Where's my teacher? My middle school girls make a sailor blush. If we use language like that, my daddy would what would whoop me till he got through. He would have whooped me till he got tired. I am telling the truth. Sin is different today. It's not. It's, it's open. It's out in the out in the. You know. If you don't believe it is, you just go on Facebook. You just get over on Facebook. You just start watching people. But watch who your friends with. I don't want to meddle in the job. What about me? Am I doing okay? I am. Thank you, sweetie. And we're still talking about a perfect heart. We're still talking about that heart that's willing to have God search me, the perfect heart. Woe unto them, the prophet said, that, that uh, seek deep to hide their counsel with the Lord. Woe unto them. The perfect heart. Here's what the perfect heart will do. It wants the Holy Ghost to come and search out the innermost man and dig out any and expose all that is unlike Jesus. That's the perfect heart. The perfect heart wants more than a covering. The perfect heart wants a cleaning. Many have just wanted a quick fix. Just kind of a quick ticket to glory. No cross. No cleaning. But watch what little John said in 1 and 7 of 1 John. But if you walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. We're in a world today that don't want to be cleansed from sin. You know why? They're enjoying what they do. They enjoy it. Enjoy it. Listen carefully. A perfect heart is a trusting heart. Psalm 22, 4. Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted and thou didst deliver them. Verse 5 said of that same chapter, they cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. David said it over and over and over. I can read it to you and keep reading it. In the Lord put I my trust. How shall ye to, why say ye to my soul, flee as a bird into the mountains? He said, I trust in God over and over. A perfect heart. Here's the one I wanted to get to all morning long. Here's my, here's my sermon. I've been building you a foundation. Here's the sermon. A perfect heart is a broken heart. It's broken. It's a broken heart. Psalm 51, 7 says, the sacrifice of God are a, sacrifices of God are a broken spirit and a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, that will not despise. Brokenness, brokenness is more than weeping, more than sorrow. I see people cry when their favorite ball team loses. I see people cry over nothing. I see people cry over sick puppies. And, and there's nothing wrong with that, but that's not, that's not brokenness. That's not what I'm, the brokenness I'm talking about. A broken spirit. A broken spirit. You know what a broken spirit does? A broken spirit recognizes something's wrong and a broken spirit says, I'm going to fix it. It's not just that something is wrong in my life. I'm going to fix what's wrong in my life. When God searches me and tells me and shows me and the preacher gets up and reads my mail like he's been sitting in my living room and gets up and preaches to me and I recognize that and my heart's broken, then I'm going to take a means to fix whatever it is. Listen carefully to me. It's more than weeping. It's more than sorrow. Brokenness is walls coming down. Walls of destruction. Walls of sin. Walls that the devil has built around you, young people. And got you believing that everything is okay. And mom and dad don't know beans from apple butter about your life. And don't know what it takes to keep you happy. And don't know what you need. And don't know what you know. It's amazing how 16 year olds can get as much wisdom now as 50 and 60 year old men and women. It's amazing. It amazes me. They know more than we do. I'm almost grown. 
And people know more than I do. I, I get people in my office, cause them off and counsels with me. And I'm sitting there telling them what to do. And they're looking around counting the nails in the wall. And I'm trying to help their soul. Does anybody understand? Brokenness. Brokenness is not just getting up here at this altar and crying a few tears. and getting up and going back out John and going back out and doing the same old stuff. That's not brokenness, honey. It's not brokenness when you cry at a ball game because the Tigers and balls lost. You don't, that's not brokenness. That's stupidity. <laughs> oh, I, I know. I know I'm a rude dude. I know that. But I'm right. That's why I love to hear me preach. I'm right. The sacrifice of God are broken in a contrast spirit. Oh God, do good. He said in verse 18, in thy good pleasure unto Zion, build. Okay, you got to tear down a wall, then you got to build some walls. You tear down the walls that the enemy built, then you build you some walls that the Holy Ghost builds and protect you like, like, a, like a big castle. You build a wall. Uh, and he told me, Nehemiah, you build the walls. Oh, speaking of Nehemiah, you build those walls of Jerusalem. Nehemiah 1 and 4 said, and it came to pass. When I heard these words, remember the walls that, that, that the enemy tore down, the walls of Jerusalem was destroyed? And the gates were destroyed and it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and well that ain't brokenness Nehemiah that's not brokenness and I mourned and I certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven that was not real brokenness he was broken because the walls were torn down it, yes it, it really bothered him he, I'm a, but I'm going to show you some brokenness you ready for this I'm just about ready to let you go and the Bible says he was real broken. Nehemiah 2 and 12. And I arose in the night and some men or some few men with me neither told I any man what God had put in my heart to do at Jerusalem. Neither was there any beast unto me save the beast that I rode upon. And I went out by night by the gate of the valley which uh, before the dra dragon well uh, and the uh Dogport, and viewed the walls of Jerusalem which were broken down and the gates thereof was consumed with fire. Then I went on to the gates of the fountain and of the king's pool and but there was no place for the beast that was under me to pass. Then went I up in the night by the brook and viewed the walls and turned back and entered by the gate of the valley and so returned. Real brokenness. Real brokenness is when you make your mind up, I'm going to do something about my life. That's brokenness. You can preach a sermon and get people to weep. Tell tell a, a story. And there's nothing wrong with any of that. Please don't misunderstand me. Charlie Mahaney told a story right over here in this, in this church. Right over here. He was, he was the national coordinator, prison ministry coordinator for the United Pentecostal International, the whole world of UPC Church. He told a story. He preached two-week revival, youth revival, in a church down in Mississippi. Every night, a young boy named Bubba sat on the back row and wouldn't move. His sisters and his whole family was coming and getting involved in the church, worshiping God. Bubba just sat there. On the last night of that revival, Brother Mahaney told one of the girls, uh, which was his sister, to go back there and tell Bubba, I want to talk to him. Now don't get offended what I'm fixing to say. She come back and said, Bubba said, tell you to go to hell. And he said, Bubba went and got on his little Honda motorcycle, got on the highway and headed home. And an 18 wheeler, Brother Stanley was jackknifed across the road. And Bubba topped that hill. And Bubba and Brother Mahaney said he didn't go to hell that night. But Bubba did. But brokenness is when you realize I'm not been right. And I've got some things in my life that's not right. And I want to make them right. That's brokenness. When we when the preacher digs our mail. And I hope I'm doing that this morning. I hope I'm doing that. The true brokenness looks deep inside of me. 
It, it allows the Word of God and God to dig inside of me and see just like David did his own shame and own failures and cries out, Lord, this cannot continue. I cannot continue to go on. True brokenness. His heart turns his heart to God saying, I will say, allow God to say, I will heal you and I will restore you and build you. God is telling us at this United Pentecostal Church today, I'm not talking about the church up the road up on the hill. I'm talking about this church today. He's telling us to get rid of the rubbish. Get rid of the rubbish and get to work rebuilding. Get the heart in it. Viewing the ruins of our life. Things that we lost out just by being hard-headed or contrary Things that we've lost. Like David had, he sinned and brought a reproach on the name of God. But God restored him. Brokenness is a total shattering of the human strength and the human ability and the human will. Not my will. We sing that song so much. Not my will but thine be done, cried Jesus. May the same prayer be mine every day, Lord. But is it really? Lord, break our will. Therefore I was left alone and saw the great vision and there remained no strength in me, Daniel said. Strength. It is a whole, holy faith that says God is at work in my life. Work on me, Lord. Satan is faith. is brokenness. I wish I had a young person today. I wish I had somebody that would with me that would say, I will not allow Satan to hold me down. No more. I'm going to get broken. Because I've done repented. I've repented of all my sins. Now I'm fixing to rebuild some relationship with God. I'm going to, young people, I'm going to, you ought to, you ought to get to the point where you're ready to rebuild some relationship with your parents. Your youth pastor, your Sunday school teacher, your church, mostly your God. I'm going to rebuild some relationships. I'm not going to allow the enemy to keep me pulled down. My sins have grieved me long enough. Now, if you're sitting here today and you've got things in your life and, and it don't bother you, then you're worse off than I thought you were. If you can sit and play and play games and not listen to the Word of God, then you're a lot worse off than I figured. But we, 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 we uh, grieve, uh, sins grieves us, and, and then it's up to us to decide that we're going to rebuild. I like these young people around here. They were great, great kids, great kids. I, and I've seen in the last few months a... a a inspiring wanting to wanting to do more working inside the building practice being here at four in the afternoons most of the time to practice I see that I see a I see a rebuilding brother Jim in some but then I see some that's not not rebuilding so if we ever need to rebuild we need to rebuild today until we get a hold of that faith. Now the Bible said, did I read this? That Nehemiah wept? I read that, didn't I? I believe I did. Lord, I knows I'll never find it. But he wept and fasted certain days. I believe that's right. And it came to pass when I heard these uh, words that I sat down there. Thank you, brother that I sat down and wept. Until we get the kind of faith that I'm preaching about today, we'll never get beyond the tears. But after he wept, and after he fasted, and after he saw the Lord, he got him a hammer and a nail apron, and a steel saw and an extension cord. And he went to work rebuilding. Now you've heard it. 
Now it's up to you to get to work and rebuild it. I like what one writer said. I copied this from, from somebody else. We ought to post a big sign. Big sign on us. That says, God at work. Enemy, beware. You see all these signs? Men at work. Slow down. 15 miles an hour. Men at work. There ought to be a sign on our heart that says, God at work. Enemy, beware. How many loves him today? Stand with me if you would. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, bless today. God touched these beautiful people this morning. As they sing, join me, would you? If you don't need prayer, pray for somebody that does. Thank you, Lord. Come join us around the front.
name of Jesus. If you be seated just for a moment, please. My wife has got well, the adult clan. Well, no, I get just the adult clan. Whoever. Sister, no, you come on right up here. Please, ma'am. Please, ma'am. You know what I said? I, I'm used to saying Please, ma'am. Uh, see, you thought she was going to get back. But somebody told her. <coughs> Amen. Sister, no, had a birthday. I need a piano play over there. Whoever can play this. Sister Christy, come out on the label. Everybody's gone. She, what did everybody do? All piano players. <laughs> Who can guess... Uh, who can guess how old or how young <coughs> Sister Nell? 64. Who said 64? Okay. 64? No. 51. 61? 51? 51? <laughs> oh, you're into it. Okay, let's see. How about that, Jim? You ought to know. That's my little 16-year-old daughter. Uh, well, now, I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint. She was a real little girl when we used to go to church with him in Memphis. So, and so we've been here. Well, that's been a long time. I'm going to say probably 55. 57. 57. 58. Say happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Every day of the year. May you feel Jesus in your life. Happy birthday to you. 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 Everybody say happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right. God bless you. Uh, Sister Peace has got an announcement for the annual plan. Uh, come back tonight, remember, we're at regular church, and we're going to have a communion service after, uh, sir, after our preach. <clears throat> Say one more thing. Praise the Lord. <laughs> appreciate everybody, and appreciate everybody for being here today. Yeah. Brother Zavani, man, I, we had not seen you so long. I, we're glad you're here today. Glad you're back. It, does that mean y'all's work is cut back some? Uh, the truck wasn't there. Uh, we'll pray that joke. Don't make it next time. <laughs> For 365 days, these people that I'm fixing to award certificates to have read their Bible and completed it through the year of 2018. And uh, Wednesday night, some of you were here, and I was able to go ahead and give you uh, part of your gift. So some of your your package won't be as heavy as uh, Aunt Wanda's and. And Brother Creases, I didn't give him his Wednesday night. But uh, anyway, uh, we had uh, five ladies and four gentlemen, if, if I've got my thoughts together. Uh, Pastor, myself, Brother Kenny Tamboli, Aunt Wanda, Sister Wanda Gatlin, Sister Wanda King, Sister Sue Jennings, Brother Terry, and Sister Brenda McWilliams. And I think that's nine. Did y'all count? If I didn't, I, I, I missed somebody. Did I miss anybody? Okay. All right. Uh, Pastor, I'm going to start with you. Pastor Creasy, God bless you. Thank you so much for doing the bread program. You can give him and the Lord a, a hand. <laughs> Brother Temple, he says it's been nine years. Okay. And Aunt Wanda, you want to let someone, maybe one of the children or somebody come and get yours. Uh, Aunt Wanda did our program, a uh, bread program, and uh, we have. Thank God for her faithfulness. Amen. And I think I heard uh, somebody say that the whole youth class is planning on doing this as a class this this year, reading their Bible through this year. All right. Did we give Aunt Wanda a hand? All right. And our sisters here, Sister Sue and Sister Wanda King, if y'all will come and receive your uh, awards today. Charles Wednesday night. All right. Now, we have uh, Brother Joseph Delaney. Amen. 
read through his Bible this year. Let's give him a hand. Thank you, Brother Joseph. And then our Brother Kenny Tamboli, uh, he says he thinks it's been nine years that he has read through the, the Bible. I was thinking we had done it a whole bunch of times, but I couldn't remember if it had been nine consecutive years. But let's give Brother Tamboli a hand. Appreciate him reading through the scripture for this year. And uh, you're welcome. Thank you. There we go. And uh, just want to encourage, if you didn't sign up to, to read through the year yet, you can still do it. The, the programs are back there. Some of them are reading straight through, and there's some that you can read through the Bible, and it's New and Old Testament, you know, on the same day. Uh, some of us like reading from Genesis to Revelation, and those are copies that we made of back in 2010. That's the last time I remember that we read straight through uh, from Genesis to Revelation. So we just make copies of that one, and we've got them out there if you want to do that program. But thank you so much, those of you that participated. Let's give them a, a round of applause. That's a lot of reading, folks. But really, we're the one that we're the ones that benefited from because. There's something about the Word of God. It just it just keeps you keeps you going. Amen. Let's stand and we'll be dismissed. Come back tonight. Pastor's going to be ministering the Word of the Lord. Amen. We're going to have church celebrating Jesus. Father, we thank you today for your awesome power. Thank you, Lord, for everyone that was here. We just pray, Father, your anointing God. Lord, would go with us. Keep us safe, Lord. Bring us back tonight ready to worship in spirit and truth. Uh, Lord, let the Holy Ghost anointing God just be with each and every one, Lord, and touch us, God, in a special way that, God, we will keep our hearts tender before you. And, Lord, keep our heart perfect uh, toward you. In the lovely name of Jesus, everybody say amen. amen. You're dismissed. God bless you.